Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our last contributed session for the day. We have a brace of Laura's from the University of Notre Dame presenting on return to campus orientation, how Notre Dame used Sakai to prepare campus for fall 2020. And presenting are Laura Geckler, the LMS administrator, and Laura Sierra, the LMS specialist. And I will hand it over to them. If they want to say anything more about themselves, they may do so. Take uh, it away. What, what do you think, Laura Geckler? They know <laughs> us by now, right? Substantively. Okay. Well, let's jump in then. Let's get started. Just want to go to the next slide. Let's get jumped in here. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining Laura and I as we talk about the development of Notre Dame's return to campus orientation site in Sakai. After pa the pandemic began, uh, the University of Notre Dame was one of the first universities to make the decision to return to campus for in-person classes for the fall 2020 semester. And that decision certainly made headlines because it was made only eight weeks after the university told students basically to head home after spring break and not return to campus for the remainder of the spring 20 semester. The decision was bold, but the university's commitment to the level of engagement that you can only have in person was very strong. Not to put too fine a point on it, but in those early days, which if we all recall could have been broken down more clearly as hours, the university created a task force to figure out what needed to happen in order to prepare campus for student and faculty return, as well as to prepare all of the office space uh, for staff. Restructuring room spacing for physical distancing, ordering, installing, and testing classroom tech, that was summer, to facilitate dual mode teaching, internet enhancements throughout campus for all the possibilities of where students might be taking class if they weren't in class, and of course, the development of new safety protocols that would affect every part of the campus experience. So this is a story about returning to campus in a pandemic. It's a story about being able to continue on working on something that you need an immediate product for, even though, uh, even though the um, the, the information isn't completely known. It's a story about pivoting, obviously, because you've got to be able to uh, wing it when you don't know everything going into it. It's a story about a compressed timeline and how to lead a team or provide leadership for a team that never meets all at once and that has so many disparate parts. You can see uh, from the moment the decision was made to all those things Laura Sarah was talking about, and then to June 12th, it's not even a month has gone by before an email shows up in our box that says, uh, could we use Sakai for the students to give them, deliver this training? They're gonna need to know what kind of changes we've made. And then, and then six weeks to go live. We had some advantages, right? Because between May 18th and our first contact, June 12th, people had been working on all the things that might have to change, right? Things that you'd have changes in safety, you'd have changes in hygiene, population density in the classroom. You'd have to add test routines and contact tracing and where you're gonna quarantine your students. I mean, we all made this stuff up, right? So there were experts out there we consulted, but we made this stuff up. Our next step. The next step, and I don't think I'll show you this, uh, this uh, URL, but you can go there. That's what the product was at the end of three weeks. It's been through a couple more iterations. There's a new dashboard of statistics on it, but pretty much all the decisions about the safety, the hygiene, the privacy, the where to quarantine students, all those decisions had been made by that June 12th and posted on this website. Well, that also helped out an awful lot because uh, this is the team that was gathered together. It was a really big team. Uh, 
the story about having all these people working together, contacting in interested stakeholders, contributing departments, really the better question would be who wasn't on the team? Uh, we were only the technical part of the team, so we got insulated from a lot of the churn around should we use this language, should we use that language, strategy discussions, um, campaign strategy, review cycle, let's take out that word, let's put this word in, let's use these images, let's not use images. Not so for Matthew, um, the uh, leader from Human Resources. Uh, he's the one that approached uh, uh, the OIT and said, is this technically feasible? They had a website, they, they had content, and now they were coming to us and say, saying, where do we host this? We need a training program for all faculty, staff, and students returning to campus. Where do we host this? Well, uh, the first pushback we had with that was, um, do we need different sites? Do we, do we need um, different groups, one for faculty, one for staffs, one for students? If we use Sakai, how do we provision all these people into a course site? And then how are we gonna extract information? Uh, HR was pretty adamant, and so was the provost office, adamant that we needed to know some way to know if people had worked in our training as it was first called. Um, had they done anything there? Uh, we needed to be able to prompt them and tell them, hey, you haven't completed it yet, please go ahead and do it. About the only uh, big controversy I can remember, maybe you can remember other um, decision points, Laura, but I remember going back and forth about text, right? For example, this slide I'm showing you is really dense with text. Imagine trying to move through um, even smaller print than that on each of the topics for, mm, I can't remember how many pages we ended up with, seven? I think part of that problem was because they didn't know originally if they wanted it to be training, which would be in depth and really, really complete, or just as you mentioned in one of the meetings, this isn't really going to be training, this is orientation. Right. This is an introduction to what it'll be like. This isn't training on every little thing that's going to change. This will be orientation. And I think that completely solidified what mood and what expectations there would be for the site. I do want to take credit for coming up with that word orientation. You did. I wrote it in my notes. <laughs> when it came out of my mouth, everybody said, yeah, that's what we're talking about. So eventually, even though course designers really, really wanted to have it be heavier with images than it was, we decided let's just um, showcase the images that the signage that will, the signage is based on that they will see when they return to camp, campus. And let's not worry too much about other kinds of, of uh, media. So um, just like the uh, website, we borrowed lots of stuff from this website. We borrowed this uh, header page here, this was sort of the basis of the whole campaign. So if you did go to here.nd.edu, you would see the campaign had this big design to it. Um, it, it was uh, already done for us, really. We're going to call this here for each other, here for the world. We're going to talk about our responsibilities as members of the Notre Dame community. We're going to try to put a... Um, for lack of a better phrase, a kumbaya feeling to it, right? We can do this because we're coming together as a community and we're sharing responsibility for this. So we had that kind of ethos going. By this time, we had already uh, talked um, the group into putting faculty, staff, and students all in Sakai. Part of the reason for that is that the HR training professional development system that we have at Notre Dame has never been, it's got a module for doing this, but it has never been good as a delivery platform for any kind of training. 
So this gave us a lot more flexibility. And we also made the case that not only do all students at Notre Dame go into Sakai on a regular basis, but so do all faculty. And so adding in staff, and a lot of the staff uh, might teach as adjuncts or might have other reasons for getting into Sakai. So it wasn't unknown to them uh, either. We had, oh, how long ago was it that we went to Google? We ran a Google campaign for faculty and staff as we switched over from our old email system. So, so we had that going for us. Uh, we had this whole ethos represented from uh, these kinds of images that, um, Laura, you said you were on campus today taking pictures. Did you find all of these signs there? Oh, absolutely. By water fountains, by doors on the floor where you stand six feet apart. It's everywhere. Yeah. Now, if you haven't noticed on our <laughs> on our slide, there is a historic iconic mural on the side of the Hesburgh Library. And it is at the north end of campus. The stadium was arranged so that the goalposts of our football field are facing north and south. And so this iconic mural of Jesus with his hands up in the air, blessing the world, got the nickname of football Jesus. And so touchdown, to take- Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus. And to take touchdown Jesus and make his hand span a symbol of the six feet apart for social distancing was brilliant. I don't know who, I don't know who thought of that, but that was brilliant. You know, something we didn't put in the slides before we get into the design of the site, but um, how did we get everybody, everybody on campus, all 18, well, there were about 18,840 some odd people Wound, that wound up in the site. How did we get everybody in the site and identify who they belonged to? Because <laughs> um, this was every staff member from the lawn, sure. from the, the the people who take care of our amazing grounds. I there's amazing staff there for the people who serve food in the in the dining commons to you know landscapers. The, the absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah everybody. We took advantage of the processes we'd already set up to do our twice daily SIS um, synchronization. So our, our student information system is Banner and um, we hadn't been exactly loading all of these uh, people's accounts into Sakai that could possibly be there since there had never been a reason before really for landscapers and dining room people to have access to it. It was more controlled than that. But, um, but because of the process, we were able to get a query from the human resources system that included all staff. We were able to get uh, queries from human resources for faculty. That was a change on how we populated this course because normally we, um, we only, we only uh, bring over accounts for faculty who are teaching that semester. So if you're new faculty and you don't start out teaching your first semester as, as happens quite a lot at research institutions, I'm told, uh, you wouldn't have your account ready for you in Sakai until you actually had a teaching assignment. But in this case, we wanted all instructors, um, all faculty, whether they're administrative, teaching, adjunct, whoever they are, and all students. So uh, initially, we thought this was another thing that just changed over time. Initially, we thought, well, we'll have three different course sites inside of Sakai for each of those populations. So we'll have to, we'll have to enroll them in their separate uh, rosters. We'll create three rosters and we'll be able to add a roster to each of our courses. And then we can, we can make this orientation material fit exactly the audience. Uh, that got mold around a lot. Remember the churn on that, Laura? Eventually, yeah, because uh, what there was content that was specifically designed for students, and there was content that would be really more designed for staff, you know, about the your offices and the spaces around you. But it was decided um, with feedback. Everybody people, needs to, yeah. Everyone should see everything because the faculty really wanted to know what the students were being told. 
about safety protocols and such. And the, so the staff wanted to know what faculty we're being told. Sure. So sure. even even some kind of a release conditional release thing didn't make sense. And and people spent a lot of time talking about this. Do they really need to hear separate things or do they want to know what applies to the other populations? And so everybody yeah. was broken into three, just basically broken down to three groups. You were either uh, the, the, the CIS system brought over faculty, they brought a roster uh, for faculty, a roster for staff, and a roster for students. And Oops, other than right. those three, other than those three classifications, we were all lumped into this one site. And yeah, it was 18, it was over, it was almost 19,000 people in the site. And I got to tell you, um, that's a lot of people <laughs> in one Sakai site. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Well, let's talk about what the site looked like. So when it was decided to place the orientation in Sakai and that the orientation would involve basically the clarification of expectations and new faculty or I'm sorry, new community standards moving forward, of course, the best way to walk everyone through that content was a lessons page. It was a very simple site, really. The orientation was to contain several specific areas such as health and safety practices, how student life on campus would change, things like that. And there would be a statement of agree or agreement of a commitment to those standards at the very end. Um, and we'll get to the commitment in just a second. So we just created a simple lessons page with single level sub pages and made each sub page required and released based on the completion of the previous page. Um, they were just really reading content here. They weren't, they didn't really need to do anything. We just wanted to give them something to read. This would also show users how far they'd progressed and how much further they had to go since each sub page would display a little check mark right after they're, after they've been accessed. We soon decided that the orientation shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes. That's the part where we had to really make a pivot. When Mari Lynn, uh, Miranda, our new provost, um, thought this was still training, she really just wanted to put a ton of stuff in here. And after a while, um, when, once we started to say, you know what, th this isn't the do all end all, right? They're gonna go to here.nd.edu for updates on everything else they need to do. This is just an orientation. Then we realized that this really, this site didn't, shouldn't be more than 15 or 20 minutes of their time. And then once we realized that, we, we realized that everyone would most likely just complete this orientation in a single session. So the content just needed to be thorough, but pithy. <laughs> so this Very slide shows, pithy. yeah. So this sh slide shows how the lesson page was created um, with you know your basic out of the box styling in Sakai 19. Now, it looks like we got a little bit of ahead of ourselves. Let me see. There it is. Oh, yep. So there once it the is. Structure and content was created. The designers went to work styling it to match the here campaign. So really. They didn't really have to do much to make the sub pages look better. They just applied some formatting to the buttons and assigned some images to them and then changed the fonts and the colors. With the structure intact underneath, applying some design characteristics was pretty simple. And the sub pages themselves really weren't very complex. As I mentioned earlier, there, there was just a little bit of text to read. So they were just made up of three sections on a lessons page. The top section had the here banner. The second section was the body of text that the student needed to, that the user, I guess, needed to read. That's the next slide. And then the, the bottom section uh, was a progress bar. Laura's gonna pop over to what the actual subpage looked like. Yeah, so there you go. You just had the logo at the top, you had the text in the middle, and then you had a progress bar at the bottom. Along with the next and back buttons. Yep, yep, the usual next and backs, which are at the bottom and at the top. So then the next slide shows how the, de the designers just applied the font and the color to all the headlines in the text. And they also applied some style and color updates to the back and next buttons at the bottom and then suppressed the redundant back and next buttons at the top um, to buy us a little bit of real estate and, and get rid of some of the clutter in the UI. Now the progress bar. Yeah, I thought you were gonna mention that. Yeah, I mentioned the progress bar along the bottom. Um, we wanted a dynamic bar that would advance as the user progressed through the pages because we decided, you know, they're not going to come back to this 
at, you know, in, in the future. They're not going to see which subpages they completed with the little check mark. They just want to get through it. They just want to get through it. So we wanted to give them, provide them some kind of progress bar to let them know how far they've come and how far they're going to go. Because they're going to be, they're just in it. Um, but Sakai really doesn't have anything that does that. And I imagine if we'd uh, tried hard enough, we could have found some JavaScript, but um, we mentioned the timeline, so. We were moving fast. So we who, moving. who decided to our little fake it? So we, we basically faked it, right? We just created a this separate was, graphic for each page. Yeah, this was the emerging. Yeah. This was the emerging technologies <laughs> um, guy from the library, Hesper Library, who was helping us. And, and he was thinking, oh, there would be JavaScript, da, 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 da. And then he thought, you know, rather than look for it and figure out how to get Sakai to run it, um, as you said, Laura, we'll just put a different graphic with a, with a, a bar with a little bit more page. green. Yeah. yeah. And nobody's the wiser. Nobody knew that, that we were faking it. Nope. It's just a fake. So I I have messed around with some lessons CSS before, and I hadn't run into the kind of stuff you see on the right hand side of the screen. And I know the font is small, so uh, if you go to the to the um, Sakai conference um, forums, I've posted the default.css. That's exactly what you're looking at here. So um, we can see that one of, well, one of the people on the team was called a, they worked in um, the university's top level communications uh, off the office of communication. And their business card says they are a multi-platform designer. And that turned out to be perfect because they tried things that they might try on a normal web page that we wouldn't have tried necessarily in Sakai because we would have said, eh, nah. So what we're seeing on the right-hand side um, in the orange, there's three lines there that are just pointing people back or pointing Sakai back to the here.nd.edu website to the font files. And that's how we got the font to change to one that isn't even supported in the in the CK editor. It's called Factoria. And then the next big problem was, well, how are we going to gather a commitment? Something that we can measure. We already had a backend process where we export our grade bo books for, um, is it all freshman classes? It has to do with some, some requirement that uh, tutoring folks who tutor our sports teams especially needed to know about other classes that take place at, at Notre Dame. And so we just sort of hijacked that process so that out of the back end, using the gradebook API, we could uh, export the gradebook data on this particular course every 24 hours. So we wanted something that would give us that. And um, it wasn't looking very good. Um, there were troubles with everything. Let's see. Um, well, I think you're going to talk about this next slide. No, this is all yours. Go for it. This is all mine. Oh, good. So those of you who know the, the lessons uh, question that you can put on a lessons page, you can, you can send it off to the gradebook. So that's uh, where we started with this was, yeah, we could use that. Uh, but if you haven't noticed here, there's, there's just some things that the designers said, we can't deal with that. There were quite a few of them, in, in fact. Um, let's see. So the first one is these uh, one colon and two colon to the right of the radio buttons. Those are actually prepended to these answers. So uh, when we tried to make them not happen, there just there wasn't a way to not to make them not happen. And we didn't want we didn't want the uh, choices to be numbered. In fact, we didn't even want a choice. This is like an honor code pledge to us where you sign the box saying, I've read the honor code pledge and I promise this is what I'll do. That's the sort of commitment we wanted this for. So there wasn't going to be uh, two answers and yet there is no kind of question like that in Sakai that would suffice. So we thought, 
can we work with this one? Can we work with this question? Uh, can we use styling? Can we um, get rid of the unstyled optional text that you can put in if someone answered it right or, or answered it wrong? So we tried to make a go of it with the lessons question. And it worked out amazingly well because once again, uh, the multi-platform gurus in communications and the library tried stuff that I wouldn't have normally tried. And, um, and so you can see on the left-hand side here, the question status text is the status uh, text that shows up after you've answered a question and that was changed. Um, we just used a display none to change to eliminate the second answer from the multiple choice question. And then uh, discovered that, that these items had item labels. So if we could make the CSS on a page apply to only one item, since the items were numbered and we were trying to affect item seven, um, that's what these labels for is we're changing the visibility of the labors, labels. So in the end, and I might even have, okay, so here's what happens when the student uh, hits the last question. All the pages are prerequisite, so you can't jump ahead. You have to do each one. And I should say just students, because as an employee, I had to do this. As an employee, Laura had to do it. Everyone at Notre Dame had to do it. So uh, this is just brief. You go up, you click demonstrating respect, click agree. And then you know how the, um, the pages at in Sakai, a lessons page, when you get to the bottom, it will bump you back up to the top again. That's exactly what you saw here. Uh, you saw yourself being bumped up to the top. And by being up, bumped up to the top when you click submit, you weren't able to see this modal box, which is what uh, we created to, it's really styling on the text box that you would ordinarily see with that remote, with that optional text that says, hey, you did a good job when you answer the right question or the, if you answer with the answer designated as the wrong, there might be alternate text. That's all there is. It looks shiny though, doesn't it? It looks amazing. You, you just, just can't dismiss it though. Once once that box pops up that confirms that you finished it, it there's no way to dismiss it. You're just kind of stuck with it there. <laughs> but that was fine. That's okay. Yeah, nobody came because back and complained. <laughs> You're just only going a, to do it once. Just a couple more minutes, you guys. All right, let's move on if I can get this. All right, so you remember how I told you this is a story about teamwork. It's a story about pivoting and getting things to continue to move along even, even if you don't know all the answers. Uh, we did find out some answers just by running this. Um, first of all, there is no way you're going to get 18,800 people in a grade book and be able to load it, load it. No way. Um, secondarily, we found that the, the site was really, really laggy, even though at the height of COVID, we've had uh, seven app servers or Tomcats, as we like to say in the Sakai community, because that's the technology. Um, <laughs> Tomcats. Um, so we have a large, uh, you know, fairly substantial um, installation of Sakai. We did discover that by turning off the uh, portal presence widget that tells you when you're in a site, how many other people are in the site actively with you, that made a huge difference and performance improved immediately. We learned that uh, awesome design takes chops. <laughs> it does take chops, but you know, now that I've been through this, I, I think we can do it. I mean, I think that we can make much better regular course sites uh, for our students to experience and to enhance engagement without too, too much extra. Uh, if your institution doesn't have a portal, well, we've got various sites in Sakai now that act as, as portals for specific cohorts. Although 
uh, enrolling the people, like I said, provisioning uh, enrollment for non courses can be a problem. It, it, it's something that, you know, takes some additional thought. And finally, I just I just want to say the large team thing did not work as badly as I thought it was going to. Uh, tweaks went out, tweak, feedback came in, student affairs took care of checking out with students and the grad students union and the student government and people reviewed it, it changed and it morphed and we got it out in time. So that's what we've got for you. Hopefully there's a few minutes of questions, but um, maybe not. Technically not. Did we have any in chat? Um, there were a couple. Um, did you require, was this required Absolutely. for people or? Yeah. Yes. 100%. In fact, those groups that we mentioned earlier, the staff, the faculty, the students, we needed, well, that information of who completed it and who hadn't had to be reported out so that the appropriate leadership could chastise the appropriate uh, underlings to finish it. There was a separate group that took those gradebook exports, combined those again with our student information systems data, printed Tableau reports of how close we were to having everybody through the orientation, and also scheduled and sent out nagging messages that you hadn't done it yet, uh, and sent that report to your dean or to your, your advisor if you were a student, or to your manager if mm. you were staff. So yes, it was required and, and we got it done. As if we didn't have enough attention on Sakai when we all pivoted to online in March, being able to have every single person involved with Notre Dame function, you know, kind of come through, funnel through this single Sakai site and have it look so great, really, um, really just made Sakai look amazing. And it, and it worked fine. Nobody reported any problems getting into it or, or working with it at all. The site was fine. The only thing that was a problem was trying to load the grade book if you wanted to, but no one really needed to do that. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. You've all been really attentive. I've appreciated allowing us to tell you what we did. All right, well, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. And I'm going to end the recording and stop the, the session. So, so long, everyone. Good job. <laughs>